um, in this way. May they rest in peace. Oh, but I mean, that is, that, is, uh, that is terrible news. I was, I was just seeing it mm. uh, filtering through. Mm. And uh, maybe at this juncture to just say, uh, mm. Paul Esana, we, we shouldn't have uh, repeats of these uh, school fires. Mm -mm. Uh, I thought that uh, following the reforms, uh, I think it was uh, following the fire at Kianguli, it was mm. years back. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I thought that uh, the Ministry of Education had put in place uh, mechanisms mm. to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. But after that, so one that happened uh, at um, Mo in Nairobi, yes. Yes. and that was horrific. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and now here we go again. Sad to see. Very, very sad to see. Yeah, so uh, my, my condolences to all those that are affected, and I'm hoping that... Uh, uh, we in the leadership will be able to do something to ensure that uh, things like this don't continue to happen mm -hmm. as we get to uh, interact more with the facts of uh, this particular incident. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you. First, I would, uh, of course, stand in the same spirit that uh, may their souls rest in peace. It's very sad. And uh, may their families get the comfort. Um, now, um, I like that you mentioned something because earlier on we were deep in politics, but we've also spoken about lost money, um, you know, people in different counties speaking on revenues. And um, uh, this particular fourth proposal, uh, revenue sharing formula, I'm yes. very curious because I'm also seeing, adjusting to that, the Senate is calling an audit of counties' revenue amid corruption claims. If I take us back a bit in hindsight, yeah. last year, um, headlines had it that uh, counties were at the verge of uh, crashing completely. In fact, they were saying shut down this thing if it's not working. Uh, you sit in the Senate and uh, we'd like to first start with uh, w where do you think we are at? Because if counties are asking for a certain amount of money, you have continued to ask them to show first how they you know, um, collect their own revenue and what they do with this money. A number of comments coming in are saying we're not seeing what these governors are doing with the money that is given to them. Where are we, Senator, with this fourth proposal and what are your thoughts? Yeah, first of all, I, I believe that whereas uh, the problem of uh, misuse of funds and corruption uh, uh, are present at both levels of government, there is an inordinate focus on uh, county governments. Mm -hmm. As a, a strong believer in devolution, we have not done enough uh, to ensure that devolution works. Uh, the money that you're talking about, uh, this year was the first time that uh, the Senate uh, pushed the allocation of counties beyond the 400 billion barrier. Mm -hmm. 400 billion is how much? It's uh, less than 10% of the 4 trillion, right? Yes. Yes, of uh, the amount of money that uh, national government uh, budget, the size of a government national budget is 4 trillion shillings. So it is a drop in the ocean, but that is not to say that we should not follow every cent and coin. Now, there is actually now a discussion in Senate that, uh, uh, you know, the president returned the Division of Revenue Act and uh, the County Allocation of Revenue Act back to us uh, with a proposal to cut down the allocation back to 380, which is mm -hmm. less than uh, the amount of money that counties were uh, going to receive, we received last year. As a position, mm -hmm. as, as members of the Azimio coalition, our position is that you cannot reduce the money that goes to counties. It is not possible. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, the law anticipates some of these uh, uh, situations and they say that if there is any shortfall in the financing of a budget, that shortfall should be borne by the national government, not by the county government. Right. So you can expect that Sifuna, as a senator of Nairobi, who swore to uphold the uh, constitution and defend uh, counties and their governments, will vote against any attempts to reduce the allocation of money uh, to the counties. There are various challenges that counties face. Do you know that counties are told this is your allocation this year. Say Nairobi, last year, we, we, this year we said you're going to get 20 billion Kenya shillings. Yeah. And then there is something else that the Senate passes called a disbursement schedule. This disbursement schedule is supposed to guide the county to know when the money is going to come from Treasury. So you will see that of that 20 billion, it is spread over maybe a 12-month period and they get uh, maybe 2 billion per per month. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't happen like that. It never happens mm. like that. You can find counties have gone almost four months without the uh, exchequer releases from Treasury. Four. Yes. So it is extremely difficult for a county government to operate in that uh, particular uh, sort of, uh, you know. So if, for instance, uh, we have said you are you're supposed to set aside 3% of your 20 billion for disaster management, 
But that 3%, at what point do you apply it? Because the money has not come in. It has delayed for three months. Then you get uh, maybe a, a quarterly allocation, then another quarter, then another quarter. What happens when there is a disaster of the level of uh, what we have seen, say, in Kieni, mm. and your, your county government has no money, mm. eh? you know? So the challenges, by the way, this, this uh, uh, late exchequer releases uh, contribute largely to the, the challenges we have at the county governments of even pending bills and mm. all the other things. But we as a Senate uh, have decided that uh, even with those challenges, there is still some money that trickles down to the county governments mm -hmm. and they need to employ that money uh, in uh, for the benefit of the people of their respective counties. Mm -hmm. Most of these counties, if you look at their, uh, uh, their audits, you'll find uh, challenges that have not left us since before the advent of uh, devolution. For instance, uh, we passed a law that says uh, you cannot spend more than 35% of the money that comes to the counties on recurrent expenditure and especially employee emoluments. But you have a county government like Nairobi that inherited this huge workforce and that you cannot sack, you know? Mm -hmm. So you find... Why can't you Why sack can't them? You? Because they have uh, employment terms. They were employed during the, 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 the previous, what is it called? Uh, county council and they're waiting to retire it would uh, put you into very serious legal quagmire and you would still have to pay them anyway because they have valid contracts of employment, you know. So that is a challenge. You see uh, county governments pushing uh, the employee emoluments upwards of uh, 60% of all the revenue that comes in. 65, so, actually. Yes, if you speak to uh, the CEC for finance in Nairobi County, yep. he will tell you that uh, you see that discussion of the uh, disbursement schedule. That amount that comes per month, if it were to come per month, it is equivalent to the salary of Nairobi mm. for the workers of Nairobi. So it becomes very difficult for us to plan. This is why we also uh, push many of these counties to be able to uh, ensure efficiency in collection of on source revenue so that they can be able to do some things and, and sa execute some projects for the people of uh, their respective counties. So, now, mm. corruption and, and wastage mm. right. is a big challenge in the counties, you know. So what happens is uh, the people with the mandate to audit the use of public resources at the Office of the Auditor General. Yes, they are. And what happens is, after they prepare the reports, we in uh, the Senate, and I, I happen to sit on the Public Accounts Committee, mm -hmm. uh, we will go through those accounts together with the entities themselves. And we will go to a uh, site to physically uh, examine some of these uh, uh, projects. You have seen us uh, either individually as senators or even as a committee. Uh, we have gone to places like Turkana, we have gone to other counties to also see what is happening. Even here in Nairobi, we have had uh, interactions with uh, uh, the Senate Committee on Health, for instance, coming to look at our health facilities. Myself, in my own personal capacity as a senator, I have audited all these uh, projects to do with uh, uh, health, even in, in sporting facilities, and all these other things. Now, what happens is we depend on other institutions to actually bring the corrupt to book. Who? The ESCC. Are Those are the ones who have the legal mandate because what happens is, and I'll give you the example, for the past uh, two years or so, over 150 cases have been referred to the ESCC by one committee of the Senate, yes. the Public Accounts Committee. Mm -hmm. And when we ask the ESCC, where are we on mm -hmm. these cases? Mm -hmm. Uh, you will hear a lot of... Uh, <laughs> just, just hang on, Senator. Yes. Let's look at this process as it plays out. Yeah. The Auditor General goes through as she is mandated to do yes. through all of this, especially, I mean, it's just on expense. It's yes. on spending money, whether yes. it's at the county level, national level, wherever it is. Absolutely. If there are queries, these are raised and they form part of a report. Yeah. The report for discussion is brought before the Senate because it's you know captured in its role Absolutely. of oversight. Absolutely. So you then look through all these reports that she brings, especially those ones where queries have been raised. Yes. What you're telling us is that you take those queries and that you then come up with a further report where there are recommendations as to what needs to be done. Absolutely. These recommendations are then now taken to the bodies who have the mandate to deal with any kind of impropriety Correct. or things like that. Correct. So what you're saying essentially is that you then play a remindery role where you keep saying, hello, EACC, we've yes. told you that this 
has gone off, you need to do something about it. Absolutely. Are you essentially saying that Senate has done its job mm -hmm. yeah. on the queries that have been raised, yeah. Yeah. but that nothing has been done yes. in terms of requisite action mm -hmm. Absolutely. to the reports and, that and, have been and raised? The committee, the committee has had occasion to summon even the leadership of ESCC uh, to come, and, and even the DCI, because uh, some of the criminality requires uh, uh, DCI mm -hmm. to, to be the ones to undertake uh, investigations. Unfortunately, for us as a Senate, we operate within the bounds of the law. There's powers that we have and powers that we do not have. In fact, if you listened or followed the conversation uh, in the Senate, we have gotten to a place where we are so frustrated ourselves, we want to even invoke uh, the power to stop uh, monies going to some of these counties. Mm -hmm. But then there is the balance to be made between, right. uh, uh, you know, whether the intended consequence would be to punish the people or to punish the county government. You understand? Mm. So, and... and uh, Progressively, we are going to have to address some of the challenges we have in the oversight bodies. Uh, the Office of the Auditor General, for instance, complains uh, to us uh, repeatedly that they are underfunded and under-resourced. Uh, we have had meetings of the Senate uh, Public Accounts Committee adjourned because uh, m uh, officers of the OAG from Kisumu Hub who audit the Nyanza counties were not able to travel. They have no fear, you know. They have no fear. So you can imagine putting an auditor who has no resources mm. uh, at the mercy of a county governor, for instance, who is uh, awash with the money. It is uh, putting them in a position where it is very easy to compromise them. You speak to the ESCC, they will tell you the same thing. Now, for instance, our committees have uh, liaisons seconded to our committee mm -hmm. to essentially help us uh, as, as legislators to do this job. We have officers from Treasury. We have uh, an officer from ESCC in, who sits in uh, park. We have an officer from, uh, uh, what is the other one? OEG. Mm -hmm. So they are essentially the eyes and the ears of the committee, and mm -hmm. they, they take us through these uh, processes. But they also complain a lot. There is also um, a, a sense in which the, there is no coordination, and the investigation of some of these uh, uh, cases is so disjointed that the officer seconded to ESCC, by ESCC to our committee, for mm -hmm. instance, has no global view of all the matters that have been referred to ESCC by the committee. So mm -hmm. you can't ask her uh, when she comes to the meeting, if you ask her, mm -hmm. where are we on the case uh, of Turkana? Uh, the governor's residence. We went there and we saw it with yes. our own eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody claims you have paid 200 million shillings uh, for a project. And when you look at that uh, structure, uh, city, uh, as a person who has also built structures yourself, mm -hmm. you can tell that Apa uh, kuna <laughs> ukora. <laughs> so uh, she doesn't have that global view because when they uh, I, I, they, they tell us long stories. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you are interested in these stories. Uh, no, so but you... the, the, the truth of the matter yes. is that the system is not working. Exactly. There is a problem. And uh, the level of, uh, even the speed of resolution of cases, it's just the other day that we saw uh, Governor Lenol Kulal, yeah. uh, the mm -hmm. former governor of Samburu, Samburu, being sentenced. And I think he's the first governor to be sentenced. And by the way, this guy was impeached over, I mean, how many years ago by, by the Senate? Mm -hmm. uh, over some of the same issues there. Mm -hmm. So we need to address all of these gaps. Uh, but uh, from the Senate perspective, in, in all mm -hmm. honesty, uh, like the accountability committees are chaired by uh, members of a minority. I am very proud of the chairperson of uh, PAC in the Senate, mm -hmm. the Honorable Senator Moses Kajuang, mm -hmm. who is a member of ODM. We have done our job so much that as at yesterday, we are examining accounts of 2022-2023, mm -hmm. which is the most current account. So nobody can say that, oh, the committees are slacking or that uh, the Senate is not doing its job. How does it rub off on Senate? If, for example, we say that Senate serves in an oversight co uh, capacity, yeah. but then we don't see the results of oversight then being applied because yeah. we don't. We can't. Yeah, it is. That. It yeah. is frustrating. It is frustrating both for uh, the public and also for for the Senate because uh, for me, I, I am I am also somebody who takes pride in results. Mm. There is yeah. no point of just being busy when, mm -hmm. when there is no output, mm -hmm. and that frustration is what has pushed us. If you look at uh, some of the conversations that have been happening in Senate, including uh, amendments to uh, the, the Powers and Privileges Act to give Senate and Parliament powers to arrest people. Uh, we need to have our own cell there to hold people who don't come before <laughs> Senate committees. Mm. That, this is what enhancing fines for people who don't show up. We moved it from uh, the paltry 500,000 shillings which people were paying like it's popcorn and uh, <laughs> try to move it to 2 million shillings so that we encourage uh, or discourage this bad behavior where people are uh, actually ignoring uh, someone's of the house, someone's of committees of the house, so that we can have that conversation. Mm -hmm. But I can uh, assure you that uh, uh, if we don't have a global conversation about the gaps in the uh, 
justice system, let me just say the justice system, the entire thing from investigation of uh, criminal conduct to the uh, you know prosecution of these uh, persons involved, then we are really not uh, going to do a, a service to to Kenyans. Mm. Now just very quickly, I'd like to hear your comments on this proposal. Yes. Uh, I think it's Senator Ledama who yes. advocated for an amendment, uh, amendment rather to the Public Finance Management Act, yes. citing numerous cases of corruption, of course, some that we know, yeah. among revenue collectors contracted by counties. Yes. He, uh, but we saw also Kadungu uh, disagreeing with that argument, yeah. uh, citing that such an amendment would perpetuate illegality. Now, for me, listening and following the proceedings, yeah. I'd like to understand, because we're looking for solutions here. Yes, what are. do you think of that proposal by Of course, it's a, it's, a, it's a brilliant uh, proposal mm. by Senator Ledama, who's also a senator from ODM. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, in case you forgot. And, uh, the, yes, yeah. okay. the whip of the minority in mm. the Senate. Mm. And he's somebody who's, uh, I think, one of the uh, senators who's most well-versed to the PFM. He knows it like the back of his hand. Uh, the challenge we're having is that uh, counties are entering into contracts for collection of revenue. But other than the amount that is declared by the collector, for instance, in Nairobi, we used to have people like Jumbo Pay, then KRA comes. Mm -hmm. And if the auditor him, uh, herself does not have sight of the actual collections, then you are depending on the uh, guy doing the collection them, uh, themselves to report what to is you. Reporting yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and that is the concern that we, we had. And I think the reservations of the uh, auditor general is that those would be private entities and uh, she has no mandate to audit those ones. Really? That, I think that was the, the basis of her objection, mm. if, if you read but that. But if, 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 so, if, uh, if their work is the, is the public entity. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. So for us, really, we, we need, first of all, to uh, tighten the uh, reporting mechanisms on the side of the public entity. Mm. Uh, because uh, there are many, many allegations about whether... Uh, the actual collections are are, mm -hmm. are, are, uh, are are reported correctly or whether they actually end up in the county coffers. And it is one of those areas that uh, everybody knows there is potential for uh, for a lot of mischief. You know, Senator Sifuna, one of the things that technology does uh, is it can enable visibility to anyone. Yes. Auditor General, the people who work within the county, and any other body that needs visibility. I agree. And that technology can enable you not just to figure out what is collected at the end of the month on a day as it's collected. Yes. You if, look at if it. You talk and you to know. many of these governors; they will tell you that uh, that they have put uh, in place uh, technology that enables them to do this. Uh, my governor famously came to our committee one time, mm -hmm. and he said, "Yes, I can see from." Uh, my phone, how much has been collected from the yes. uh, Bama market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, an audit of that process by uh, our committee in uh, the county assembly. Uh, returned, uh, in fact, uh, they, you faulted that they, system. They, there, is a, <laughs> there is a report on the Nairobi County Revenue yeah. uh, a collection system that had been prepared by the county assembly and all of us were waiting for that report to be tabled. I was reading in the papers that uh, somehow Mm -hmm. uh, something has happened and this report cannot be tabled. So what we have done, <laughs> what we have done, what we have done as Senate, uh, the County Public Accounts Committee, is that we are going to do that investigation ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, we are going okay. to do a, a, a deep dive into the Nairobi Revenue Collection System as the County Public Ac uh, Accounts Committee of the Senate. Because uh, m whatever games are being played at the County Assembly, I can assure you, that uh, the county administration does not have the same leverage over the Senate. Mm. And our report, you cannot, you cannot uh, prevent a report of the committee of the Senate from being tabled. It will not happen. It will not happen. So, so whoever the, it yeah. is that is playing games with the county revenue system in Nairobi, just know that uh, yeah, the well, you will be bound out. The oversight role yeah. from county to national yes. um, still remains very, 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 very important because it seems as though that is the arm, that is the tool right now that someone will have for asking questions. There are currently individuals who are going around the country who are shining the light on things where mm -hmm. money has been spent. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where money has been spent and we do not see development yeah. happening. We yeah. cannot run away from that fact. There are white elephant mm -hmm. projects all over the place, money in the hundreds of millions yes. has been spent, yes. but we do not see development. We had a conversation this, this morning that if a trillion shillings mm. in development mm. were to be in this country, you would see it. You would see it. Or even one. if it was over 10 years. And I agree. One trillion. And if I there agree. was a trillion shillings is... spent over 10 years for development, we would see it. But yeah. the truth of the matter is that we do not. This and is, that this the is questions that... are being asked, but the answers are not yeah. being given. Yeah.
it's at your doorstep. This is this is something that uh, personally I want to encourage, and uh, I am very proud of uh, the. You know, some of the gains that we have had from this movement that we have seen over the past three uh, months in Kenya is that uh, ordinary citizens have become more civically engaged. And it can only bode well for our democracy and for our country. Uh, for the longest time, I've complained, including on this show, that uh, I have felt over the years that uh, Kenyans had outsourced their responsibility under Article 3 uh, to defend the constitution. Uh, to one man, mm. uh, to Raila Odinga, so that if Raila Odinga did not say anything, then na no one said anything. Mm. But I am happy now that Kenyans have realized just how powerful they are, mm -hmm. that your voice is powerful. It doesn't matter what title you hold. Mm -hmm. You could be the smallest person, uh, if we can use that word, but your voice is very, very powerful. And the fact that Sisi Wote to Namulika, all of these issues, uh, it is going to uh, board very well for our democracy and for our country. So we need to expose these lies everywhere because as as we said during the beginning of this uh show is that we see a lot of excitement during the uh, groundbreaking ceremonies mm. so you, uh, commissioning project. launch of projects even in the county governments when they are going there to uh, unveil the project and the, the governor is there with the, the grader and, 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 a, and a scoop but, but soil kidogo. A but after that nothing happens when it's a completion. The completion the that's projects. what i'm saying yes. so we, we are also in a space where uh, government policy in this country is, is influenced only by embarrassment and outrage. We are being governed 24-7 by outrage and embarrassment. Because if you don't embarrass people publicly, they will not do the job. So for years, city, we have spoken about, the say, the, the stadium pledges that, that we had. Mm -hmm. uh, Kamarin Stadium, mm. which the president told us was mm. historic. Mm. And he stood before the public saying it will be complete in six months', months time. time. I am happy that it is not just these young people doing it. I have seen newspapers over the past five years, every single time, uh, even if it is monthly or by, by monthly, you will see a uh, state of sports stadia in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. And they sent reporters there to give us an update of the actual thing. They go to Wote, they go to Kamarin, mm. and you can tell that there is nothing there. Then they cross-reference with the amount of money that has been allocated to the project, how much has been paid to the contractor, contractor. and so on and so forth. So even uh, as we continue to do this, it is something to be celebrated. It is something to be celebrated so that nobody can hide anything. Even if you are uko down in the village for as long as you have a camera, mm. you can just take a photo and say, this is the water project that the president told us. It is now six months, uh, Six months. there's no contractor. Mm. In Nairobi, I have taken it upon myself. When, when the county government tells you that the contractor is on site, you go there because in Nairobi, you can it's, reach. A very, yeah, it's a very small place. Mm. You just go and I have gone. Uh, at times I was being told, oh, City Stadium, there's a, a contractor. I went there, there was no contractor. Contractor. You go to uh, Woodley Stadium at that time, there was no contractor. And I'll be doing those rounds regularly so that we find out where are we with these projects and you don't get lied to. What would it but achieve? Senator, what, is something what, it achieves, what it achieves is, by the way, let me tell you, uh, exposing lies helps to push the cause of truth forward. Mm -hmm. I was in, uh, in, uh, uh, at, at this um, Democratic National Convention in Chicago and I was listening to a panel uh, it had uh, Senator Chris Coons was there, mm -hmm. um, Ambassador Rice uh, was on that panel, and there was a representative, I, I forget her name, from uh, uh, California, and they were talking about the Moderna vaccine factory in Nairobi. Mm. I was like, uh, <laughs> Nairobi? Yes, yeah, Roger. Roger. I am the Roger. senator hey. for Nairobi. Roger, too. I am not aware. Your, your project is <laughs> happy in Nairobi <laughs> as well, because I'm not aware. And because for them, I don't blame them because mm. they, they get fed information. They have, yeah. not, they have not been here. Mm. So if there was a, a vaccine factory in Nairobi, I would know, mm. surely. So if you don't have that information and you're not able to quickly dispel those lies, mm. then uh, you're not helping to There's advance the cause of truth. In yeah. a very few seconds, City. Yes. City, as you pay quickly, uh, yeah, the, just let the him the say because slave, our time is our okay, time. Is saying the up, best yeah. slave, there's something about the best slave is the one who thinks he's free. City, uh, city you can pay. Yeah. <laughs> This issue about the, the opposition government, yeah. can legislation help? There are countries that have legislated and mm. opposition works. In Seychelles, the president is appointed by the PM and the opposition leader. Okay? Mm. In Argentina, the opposition party appoints the auditor general. In Poland, the leader of the opposition even once became the prime minister. Now, in Seychelles, again, you find that the president and the leader of the opposition share constitutional appointments. Mm. All right. So what we have in this country is not unusual. 
The question is, does our law permit it? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, from a purely legal perspective, I can tell you that the law permits a president to tap uh, uh, anyone to his cabinet. What you cannot do and what the law prevents is for you to uh, advance the causes of a political party, either if you are an elected official like myself, to advance the cause of a party other than the party that you elected on, or if you are an independent to join a party, you are required to actually vacate your seat. But mm. the president uh, of, uh, of of any country can decide uh, City Muga is going to be a member of, of, of cabinet. There is nothing that stops that. Mm. In Kenya, is not laws that we need. We have bad manners as politicians. It's just political bad manners. Right. And you can't regulate all the bad manners because every day people come up with creative ways to become bad people. Bad people. <laughs> yeah. Senator of Nairobi County, Edwin Sufuna, and ODM Secretary General. Thank you for being here. Always a pleasure to have Asante you here. Sana. Important to have these conversations and we need to keep having them. Absolutely. Until the next time we meet, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. It's one minute after nine. Unless you innovate, unless